shakes. I'm like, mm. nervous. Welcome to the Glazer Room. This is Hillary. Hillary is going to be showing us how to run one of the programmable kilns for a bisque load and for a glaze load with all the different variations that happen there. And she is also kind enough to show us how to run one of the manual kilns for a firing. So we're going to be going step by step through which buttons to push, where to put your delays if you want them, where to put your holds if you want them, lots and lots of details. So thank you, Hillary, for doing that for us. Okay. Let's get started. Okay, so um, this is what your screen should look like. It will be flashing idle and the current temperature inside the kiln. If it doesn't look like that, it'll look like this one over here. Um, so this is finished firing. And so it has um, the complete and then it flashes between the current temperature and how long it took. So if after you're finished firing, if you just hit stop, then it'll switch back to the idle and temperature like this one. And then you can go from there. Okay, so before you start, you want to make sure all of your peeps are in. Um, and after you finish loading, you should latch your kiln as well. Um, and then uh, when you're ready to program, you hit comb fire. If you want to do a preheat, this is where you would do it. Um, keep in mind that this is minutes. So if you, if you do 10 like this, that's 10 minutes. Um, if you add another zero, that's one hour. And then, um, if you, if you wanted to keep that, you would hit enter. Um, if you want to start over, you just hit stop and then start over. So comb fire. If you wanted to do a preheat here, you would do it. If not, hit zero, enter, comb. For a bisque fire, we do 06, so 06, enter, speed. For bisque firings, we always do slow, enter, hold. If you wanted to do a hold, you could do it here. Same thing, um, like that's one minute, 10 minutes, one hour. Um, yeah, okay. So comb fire. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Zero for preheat, cone 06, enter, speed, slow, enter, hold, zero, enter. Now it's flashing between the idle and temperature again. To make sure you did all of your settings right, you hit review, and it cycles through everything that you just programmed, and then you wait for a minute, <laughs> <laughs> and then once it's um, cycles through all of these things, it'll flash between uh, the idle and temperature again, and then you can hit start. Your on will show up. Um, it's a good idea to just give it one minute to make sure you hear those clicks so that you know it's on. Perfect. When would you put in a delay? If you wanted to delay this firing by like six hours so it would fire overnight rather than during the day, when would you implement Right, that? so you do, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanted to do a delay, you do it at the very start before you program everything else. So you just hit delay, however many hours, you wanna do five hours, enter, and then comb fire. Do all of your settings and then review. Um, delay five hours and then you would hit start. Oh, if you hit start and nothing happens, it's just because this hasn't cycled through all of your settings already. So hit start again once it's back to idle. And then you'll see the countdown start here. So if you give it one minute, then it will change and count down. Should we wait a minute? I'm not gonna wait a minute. It'll count down. Wait until it counts down. Make sure it's counting down before you leave and assume that it's firing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so for a glaze fire, it's pretty much the same steps. Make sure all your peeps are in. Make sure the lid is latched. Um, your screen will be flashing with idle. 
Um, so you go ahead and press cone fire. For kilns two and three, we cone fire, um, or we glaze fire to cone five. Um, so if you wanted to do preheat, you would do it here. If not, zero cone, make sure it's five and Why? not O5. Why do we glaze fire to five in these two kilns? These two kilns tend to run hot. Um, so to achieve cone six, we fire to cone five and it gets to the same temperature. Perfect. Um, so five, enter speed for glaze fires. We do medium speed instead of slow, enter. Hold, if you wanted to do your hold here, you would do that. Enter, and then review. So cone five, speed medium, hold zero, preheat zero, delay. Oh, so that's a good point, I guess. Um, from the last firing week that we did, we had a five hour delay, so that's still programmed here. So if you wanted to change that, um, you would just do it zero or whatever you wanted to program. So always, always make sure you hit review before you start uh, so that you know exactly what all of your settings are because some of them are like are kept from the previous firing. So if you review that again, is that delay gone? Cone five, speed medium, hold zero, preheat zero, delay zero. Perfect. And can you just quickly talk about the decimal point thing, hours right. and minutes? Um, so, yes, so um, one is one minute. If you add a zero, that's 10 minutes. If you add another zero, that's one hour. So just keep in mind that the decimal point here really should be a colon. Um, it's kind of like a microwave. <laughs> so you, um, like if you added another zero, that's 10 hours. So just make sure you're not um, adding more time than what you actually want. Perfect. So this is the kiln log that we kept talking about in the previous videos. There's a whole binder of these over here. Bum, bum, bum. But we're gonna do it here just for the sake of recording. So uh, Hillary's gonna fill out what you would do if you were firing uh, kiln two, which is one of the digitals, she's gonna fill that out and show us the different options there. And then we will pop over and do one of the manual ones after. So, okay, so every single time you fire, um, you need to make sure you fill one of these out. Um, so you fill out your name here. If you are sharing with somebody, you can put their name also. And then um, for each, kiln the price is a little bit or like the yeah the price is a little bit different depending on which one you choose um so for just as an example so if we're firing kiln two Aaron and I are splitting it 50 50 so up here I'll write 15 for Hillary 15 for Aaron just so that our studio managers know exactly how much um to bill each of us for our firings so um kiln two we did a bisque firing so I'm going to circle bisque um, we loaded it in the afternoon, so we wanted it to fire overnight. So we did, um, delayed firing start at 10 o'clock PM. We've already checked the, uh, the log and it fires for about 10 hours. Is that right? <laughs> Quick, let's check the log. We're doing a bisque. You're doing a bisque in kiln two. Bisque in kiln two. The last ones were... 14 hours, oh, this is July. So this is a couple months ago now. 14 hours and then like a 12 hour. So let's let's assume 12 hours on the high side of things. Sure. Um, all of our pots were super dry, so we did not need to do a preheat. And then... Um, so because we started the fight, we put a delay on it. We started yeah. firing at 10 p.m. When do we have to come back and check it? So we need to come back around... 12 hours later. 10 a.m. Yeah. The next day. <laughs> <laughs> Math. So Aaron comes back around 10 o'clock the next morning to check that it's off and it is, yay. Um, on the screen of the kiln, it will have complete flashing with the total time and the temperature that's currently inside the kiln. Um, so let's say the total firing hours were 12 point whatever, 17 minutes. And Aaron checked it off so she would 
initial here, and then that's it. Okay, so we have loaded our kiln. Um, one thing we didn't talk about is timing. So Hillary, why do we time our kilns the way that we do? <laughs> So for kilns two and three, it's pretty easy to program to start them when you want to. There's no turnips you have to worry about. The kiln does all of that for you. Um, so you just want to make sure that you have a look at these um, log sheets here that are usually behind me on the bulletin board. Um, this just keeps track of how long our kilns have fired for in their previous firing so that you have an idea of when to come and check that they're off. Um, so for kilns two and three, um, it looks like bisque glazes or sorry, bisque firings are around like 11 and a half hours typically. Um, glaze fires more like nine or 10. So you want to time when your kiln starts so that you can check when it's off at a reasonable time of day. 12 so, hours is safe. 12 hours is safe. Um, so if you wanted to start it in the evening, great. 10 p.m. whatever you can delay it to start at the time you want so that you're able to come back in the morning right around the time that it should be shutting off um this is just so that we make sure the kiln has done what it's supposed to do isn't over firing um yeah that's it i think that's it <laughs> oh and if there's somebody working in the studio right you can always Absolutely. You can call the studio or you can have a look at the Google Calendar to see if there's anybody here. Most of our members, if not all of them, are more than happy to check your kiln for you. We'll save you a trip. And save you a trip to the studio. So then um, they would just do the initial on the kiln logs that we talked about earlier um, and write down the firing time for you. That's it. Hi. Um, so there is a little bit of paperwork that we need to talk about. Um, every time you fire a kiln, you have to fill out a kiln log. Uh, this is what they use to keep track of the timings of the different kilns. That's how they know if one of them is malfunctioning, it's too taking too long to fire or whatever. Um, so it's important that you fill these out. It's also how you are billed for your kiln usage. So they take these kiln logs. Um, <clears throat> and then they tally up what everybody owes and they send you an invoice for them. So important paperwork. So I'm going to sit down with one now. I'm going to show you how to fill it out. And, um, yeah, it's all very exciting. So this is the kiln log. At the top of it, we want to put our name. So this is going to be the same for whether you're doing a manual kiln or uh, one of the programmable kilns. So I'll just put my name and I'll say that I shared it with Hillary. Um, now I'll do the programmable kiln first. So we're going to fill out this section here for kiln two. And let's say we did a bisque firing. Um, we didn't set a delay on it, so we don't have to fill anything out there. If we had set a delay, we'd say starts at 9 p.m. or whatever. Um, oh, the date is important. It is now November the 20-something. Um, preheat, we didn't have any preheat on there. Total firing hours, this is something that you fill out after your kiln has finished firing. This is the number that will be on the display um, when it's flashing between idle and the current temperature. It'll have a it'll have a time on there. So let's say 12.71 total firing time. Kiln checked off at. Um, so we're gonna run it overnight. I'm gonna say that I came and checked it off at 9 a.m. So if you, if you start a kiln, one of the digitals, if you start it um, in the evening or honestly, whenever you start it, 12 hours is a, is a pretty safe time to come back and, and check that it's off. So that's all you need to fill out here. Um, if, if Hillary and I had split this half and half, this kiln, um, we've got a $30 firing fee on there. So I'd say $15 
and fifteen dollars. If I had more stuff than Hillary, we could say twenty dollars and ten dollars. We can fill that out um, however it however it suits the stuff that's in the kiln. So lots of times if you're just sneaking in one or two items into somebody else's kiln, they're not even gonna charge you. I don't. Um, nobody wants a, a $2 firing invoice. So I think what goes around comes around in that regard. So now for the manual, um, let's say we did a glaze firing for this guy. Um, again, it's $30. So we can split this however however is necessary up there. Um, so this one is important. So hours on the timer when kiln turned too high. Now in the video, um, there was some information added in there at the request of our um, kiln tech, Jeff. And Generally speaking, you only want to have a couple hours extra on the timer. Um, extra meaning beyond what that kiln has been firing at on high. And so that information on each of the kilns is in that um, firing log in the, in the glaze room. It's pinned to the wall. It has all the kilns um, and how long it's been taking them to fire. So have a look at that. And then if kiln five has been spending six hours on high in its last recent firings, um, then you would put eight hours on the timer just so that if something happens and the kiln sitter doesn't drop for whatever reason, if something jams it, if it, like if it just doesn't work, if it malfunctions, if you have too much time on that timer, you can actually melt all your stuff. Like it's a, it's a fail safe so that if one malfunctions, at least the other is going to stop the thing from firing for six hours longer than it was supposed to. And six hours on high is like 600 degrees. It's ridiculous. So only go for a couple hours beyond what that kiln has been firing at. And then when you come back and check that your kiln is off, you're going to mark down how many hours are left on the timer. And let's say one and a half hours were left on the timer when you came back. And so then whoever's tracking all of the kiln times is gonna look at this and say, oh, okay, it's taking, oh math, <laughs> it's taking six and a half hours to fire. Uh, and they'll they'll log that on the form and so the next person that comes along might leave eight and a half hours on the timer. So that's that's a really important um, note that we did have to go back and add into the video. So keep track of that. So um, over here in this corner, this is the section on turnups and this is for one, four, five, and six. All these kilns are the manual kilns. So what we're going to do is mark down when we do our turnups. So Hillary and I are gonna do a turn up at 7 a.m. and Hillary's gonna do that. And then I'm gonna come back at 9 a.m. in like that two hour interval. Uh, and I'm gonna do that turn up. And then she's gonna come back at 11 a.m. and do the last turn up. And that's when she's going to set that timer to eight hours because that's the final turn up that's that's go time uh, so now it just fires until it's finished so she'll set that timer for eight hours making sure that we have enough to finish um, finish the job and then whoever comes back um, to check that it's turned off there's a, a space right here kiln checked off at so if we go to high at 11 a.m um and we've set eight hours on the timer, we're gonna come back at 7 p.m. to check that it's off because that's eight hours later. So 7, 7.30, I'm gonna say I came back at 7.30 to check that it was off and it in fact was off. Mark down how many hours were left on the timer. Now, if there's any notes, any operational issues, any, any trouble that you have with it, if you notice um, Kiln 1 had a 
had a brick that had a crack in it. You would you would write something like that in here, as well as tell our kiln tech, Jeff. So if you notice anything about the kilns, if something doesn't feel quite right, um, make sure you tell somebody. So this form can feel overwhelming, um, but your first firing is going to be done with somebody who knows these forms anyway. So don't worry about it right now. Um, it's really just record keeping. It's not, it's not a big deal. We just have to make sure we keep track of this stuff. So that's how you fill out the forms. Um, you're pretty much ready. I feel like it's time for you to book a, book a kiln firing with an existing member and get your feet wet because the, the sooner you do it, the more comfortable you're going to get with it. It's not it's not a big deal. I mean, there's stuff you have to be careful about, but it's fine. It's going to be fine. So that's it.